Hey guys, this is Eric at Back Alley Garage. Um, what I'm going to do today, I'm not going to waste your time going through an introduction. What I'm going to do today is on this Explorer that I know has a lot of issues. I have a new pressure transducer that I got off of eBay. Heard a lot of bad things about the hose, but good things about the sensor. What I'm going to do is hook it up to a Martin Lauren, an H scope, uh, or an H512 two channel oscilloscope and go see what we get all right guys i'll get right to it all right back under the hood it got the compression gauge in the b hole number five we're gonna see if she got any compression left in her girlfriend aaron's gonna crank it hold the pedal to the floor and don't let it start all right go ahead somewhere in there around 130 pounds all right it held at 130 pounds for 10 minutes plus but the uh, next thing I'm gonna do is take that out I mean that's pretty good compression to work with you know hopefully gonna verify its timing with this but it's mainly my first use for uh, you know that's the whole reason so I'm just taking my time and you know maybe I'd be chasing other ghosts I did see some lean misfires so, I mean, I, I'd probably be looking at fuel, but just want to confirm the timing. It's a good thing to do. Alrighty, I downloaded the manual. What we're going to do is we're going to just scroll down. There's the appearance. Okay, we have the red power button, long press for four seconds, long press to turn it on and off. Okay. The range gear key, switch the measurement zoom position. Zero, zero key. When there's no external pressure measuring part, one click midline value returns to zero. Okay, so that's your zero button. Uh, parameter description. The device has three gears. Effectively an analyzes many automotive pressures, including cylinder compression, intake manifold. Okay, that's why we're here. Um, Okay, vacuum exhaust, no. Green light, vacuum test, no. Also such as back pressure. Okay. We have the battery charged up, size description. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Remove the coil, okay, we have that done. First, we're doing it in clear flood mode, so we're not going to have to convince this coil it's firing just quite yet. When I do a running compression test, we're going to trick the coil into thinking it's still firing in the cylinder. Well, it knows it's firing somewhere, but we're not damaging anything. Sex appropriate adapter. Okay, I already have the hose and the transducer in the hole. Connected connecting hose. Okay, we're not using the aluminum tube. We have to use the straight hose and I'll, whenever I take it out I'll show you that it does not come with a Ford adapter but I did have one from another compression gauge okay connect it with the hose okay I already have it under the hood connect the oscilloscope with a BNC cable set the time base 25 milliseconds and arrange it 100 millivolt that's going to be our, our parameters and and select the trigger automatically, which is normal. Yeah, so I usually do. Uh, okay, there we go. There's a waveform on it, but this is going to be the... I believe that looks like a running one. We're not going to do that first. We're going to do it in clear flood. We're going to just see see what we see. We know we're getting compression, but I, I want to compare what we see on there to basically what we saw on the gauge. So that's the important part. So 25 milliseconds and 100 millivolts. All right, I'm going to take out, I already have it out, but I'm going to hook up the Martin Lauren uh, 512, HS 512 oscilloscope. It's, uh, I mean, that, that'll make another interesting video. I mean, we'll, I'm sure the U-scope might even run this because I need one channel. But this is it to check the timing. I'm going to need two. So I'm going to give this, I'm new to this platform. The H scope platform new to the HS512, but we're gonna see what we get. 
Well, the first I'll note is I noticed that the BNC cable, the way I have it suspended, just I have it going to my light bar. These things are great for anything you have to isolate. I mean, kind of gives it a little bit of shock and gives you something to hook on to. But at any rate, the, this cable, I'd say it's only a one meter cable. I couldn't even get from it up here just straight down to that little table. That's because I, I don't want the scope tablet, everything vibrating. I'm going to get you a good shot of what we're going to see. So, But on a positive note, whenever I purchased uh, HS512, I got a 3-meter BNC cable from Martin Lauren. And I also noticed... Get out of the bag. And I did look down on... This one's from Martin Lauren, and this one's came with the transducer. If that's insulation, uh, this one looks better insulated anyway. It looks like a higher quality cable, so it's very, a lot more flexible, easier to work with. This one's thick and rigid, so this just looks like a generic one, but keep it around because you might need to cut the end off of it, make your own sensor or whatever, but... I'm going to use this cable so I can actually put the scope on the little table there. All right, guys. I'll be back. All right. I was going to make a custom probe for it, but there's really no point. All I did was change the, on the new, I changed the unit, the PSI, but it's a one volt equals 100 PSI. So it's a nice, even if we have one, one volt, we have 100 PSI. If we have one and a half, we have 150 PSI. I'm going to see how accurate it just comes in. I downloaded, a, there was a, on the downloads, on the probes, there was a, a 500 PSI transducer. So I hit it first, but I think I'm going to just go with this. All right, Aaron's coming up, and then we're going to turn it on and crank it. We'll see what we get. All righty, Aaron's in the driver's seat, ready to crank it. Transducer's hooked up, zero to dot. Have it on the H scope software. Gonna hit start, go ahead and crank it, Aaron. Okay. All right. Really happy with that. Make sure I say that. Wow. It's pretty good. You can even, I don't know if a filter will clean it up even more, but put a low pass filter on it. Wow, that's pretty good. Really good detail on it. And we're seeing it's one volt for every 100 pounds. And on the compression gauge, we were around 130. Uh, somewhere in there, I didn't do it very, very precise. But we have 1.2, put cursors on it and do measurements. But... I was just looking basically for mechanical integrity, you know, see if something was really, really amiss. But the battery was dying. That might explain some of the, well, being run down, but that might explain some of the uppers. But, hey, that's a beautiful capture. Pretty good. Pretty good transducer, pretty good scope, and uh, pretty good program. All right, guys, next I'm going to put a trigger on it off of the coil and then do a running compression test, and we're going to see exactly where the sparks come. All right, I'll be back. Okay, if we go back and take a look, we could see from the bottom to the top, we're getting, looks like 118, 119 pounds of pressure, according to that transducer. But we're mainly here to get the, the data and work with the waveform. We also have 
that there's phase rollers also. There, there's a lot of things that you could use, but mainly that, that was a pretty good, pretty good capture. It'd be coming up on the exhaust. Pretty interesting. There's 180 and there's the exhaust valve closed and any intake valve opening. You could really work with this. I like it. It's good software. Good hardware and hey, it's good to add to your diagnostic arsenal. All right, next I'm going to hook up the dummy coil. We'll see what we get. I also picked up these uh, three meter probes from Martin Lauren whenever I ordered the uh, HS512. And these are good. I, I have a bunch of hand tech ones and a couple fluke cables, but to get from where I'm at to under there, the three meter BNC works beautifully, and I have some, you know, some to spare. Um, next, I'm going to just run one of them to the coil. We're going to see which one's the control wire and which one's the power wire. It's only a two wire coil, and I already do have a spark tester on it. Because we need that coil to fire, we can't just unplug it. We have to actually pick it up firing. So we're going to do that with the control wire. And we're going to see if we could tell where the, on the timing that the spark is occurring. And then I just have that ran to the frame, or to the engine. All right, let me get that wire ran around, and then I'll start it and let it run. And we'll see. This thing doesn't rev very good, but we'll give it what she got see what it is the nice thing about H scope is uh, I, I got the leads on uh, channel 2 is it has a voltmeter so you don't have to get out another tool if you wanted to, on the coil we're looking for the control wire which would be the negative you could back probe them both it's not gonna hurt nothing just don't don't run power to them just keep your clamp on the negative you can see I got not what the battery voltage is. It's low from doing the other part of the test. But I'm going to move that over and then start it and see if we can capture both of them. I'm going to move that over to it's on the green wire now. I'm going to move it over to the white wire. And then that's one we want is the negative. I also added a 20 to 1 attenuator. Uh, I'm not sure I might have been able to get away with a 10, but I'm going to just go with a 20 and see what I get because it's a, you know, you can't over protect. All right, now I'm going to start it. Well, I'm going to set this up on channel two and then I'm going to start it and then see if, what we can capture. It was easy enough. I just went into the probes library and downloaded for channel two. Uh, 20 times 20 attenuator so that should be set up on channel 2 I'm going to start it now see if we get any kind of pattern on the screen see the spark firing you all getting the signal the gap might be too big to get it consistent but what we're going to do is record I don't know what we're getting on top we could change our time base a little bit by squeezing See more like what we're used to seeing. This is still recording. I could stop this now and have all that information and shut it off. Okay, there's the data live recording. I'm going to stop it. Got the sample rate right down to 150 and the amplitude. This actually had a 20 that moved. I don't know if that makes a difference. But yeah. But that was nice there. I'll take it. You got a really nice capture on some of these. I put a low pass filter on both of them. 
The way the AC keeps going down, I mean, or not the AC, rather, you know, the DC, the control wire for the coil, sure seems like it's rolling like has AC voltage on it. I mean, if that's the case, that'll really throw you out. That's easy enough to test for tomorrow, but right now I'm happy I put the phase rollers on, just drug one to the end of the firing event and then one to top dead center and it tells you it's 10 degrees, 10.3 degrees before top dead center. This is a nice tool. I mean, both of them are nice. I'm happy with everything. Hope this, you know, gave somebody some information. If you're thinking about getting into this platform, I, this is a more than satisfied with it for the work I do, but it lets you do a little bit more advanced work with, you know, without breaking the bank on a Pico. But all right, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. Adios.